that there are a lot of people who don't like Trump who will vote for him mm -hmm. because Trump's personality issues and ego is nothing compared to Biden's failures with the economy, foreign policy failures, Eastern European war. These are, mm -hmm. these, these are all just apocalyptic failures for a president. It's true. It's, and it's, I mean, it is possible that he and Hunter, Joe Biden and Hunter Biden got us into this war in the Middle East. Obviously, oh, Russia. You mean in Ukraine? Yeah, I call, I call it the Middle East. <laughs> it's near the it's Middle the East. Middle it's East. all kind of one area. You know, Turkey is Turkey, the Middle East. It's right next the to The Middle it. East of Europe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and it's like if they went there and did some, if Hunter went there and then got bribed to be go on an energy board for Burisma and they were, and then Biden just was like, yeah, let's make some money off this. And then we got into a war. Like that's the most true, maybe not treason, maybe not treason, but like what selling out the country for sending the country into a war to make profit. I that? think it would be treason. But I guess treason is specifically I, providing aid to a foreign adversary in a time of war. I think that I don't think that it's that personal. Like, I don't think when it comes to the war in Ukraine, I think that there's a whole apparatus that is interested in seeing Russia, uh, you know, hurt and seeing uh, well, actually just mostly Russia hurt. I think the the support yeah. from Ukraine comes from the United States saying it is better for our foreign policy to have a weaker Russia. So when Russia decided they wanted to attack Ukraine or invade Ukraine, the U.S. said, we will help Ukraine. We will keep feeding them arms and essentially it's the same model that you know you we used or the u.s used when there were the russians were in afghanistan right so you were feeding arms and ammunition and money to the mujahideen and they were fighting russians so that way the russians would feel the same pain that the u.s felt when the u.s was in vietnam fighting the vc and that was being funded by the russians and the chinese this is the kind of thing that happens or has happened uh, regularly since the end of World War II, because the Russians and the United or the U.S. and the Ru and Russia can't get into an actual confrontation themselves, because it'll likely turn into a nuclear war. These kind of uh, military actions are horrible, and you see, you know, war crimes are being posted on X every day. I just saw one. There's a dude trying to surrender to a drone, and they keep dropping bombs on him because, well, he's the bad guy. Well, that's a war crime. If he's trying to surrender, and they keep dropping hand grenades on him to kill him, that's a war crime. And you see this stuff all the time. And it's normal in these kind of, uh, well, it's normal in war, and it's it really does benefit the U.S. strategically to have Russia engaged in a war and have Russia weakened by you know having a bunch of people die. It's gotten so dark, Phil. Like I'll, I'll watch these videos and you see the people gathered around the tablet flying this drone and they're laughing because they're disconnected from the carnage and the chaos they're causing. To be well, fair, though, if you if if someone invades the United States, all bets are off. Sure. You know, if someone invades your country, like war crimes are for like people that are in like the U.S. when they were in World War II had to worry about war crimes when they were in France. Right. Nobody was looking at the French saying you're committing war crimes because, right. you, you know, you're cutting Nazis heads off or whatever. Well, the Nazis invaded, you know, that's what happens. And that's what tends to happen in war generally. But it doesn't make it, you know, doesn't make it any less of a war crime. Well, here's the thing. It's interesting. You say, you know, the U.S. thinks it strategically helps us to be funding this war or whatever. But I would kind of make a counter argument to that, which is in many ways we pushed Russia and Ukraine into this spot. You kind of look at the history of the uh, the Minsk Accords and stuff over the years. You know, the United States has stepped in repeatedly and told Ukraine, don't negotiate with Russia. You know, they kept fanning the flames of this. But then what has happened now as a consequence of that? is Russia now in the moment may look kind of stupid. Hey, look, their invasion isn't going so well. Ha ha. Uh, but what's long term, what's long term happening is Russia is being back now into the corner of China. And, you know, they're all together now and, and meeting and there's an alliance there. It's obviously forming. People say, oh, that's inevitable because they're both authoritarians. That's not true at all. When you look at the history of Russia and China, there's a reason why they've actually been a little bit more isolated. And Putin's been nervous about going into China's hands, even when they were both uh, communists, right? The Soviet Union and Mao's China didn't even get along. Um, and I think Putin's been in this position the past few decades where he's not sure, do I want to be Western or Eastern, tries to play both sides. We could have potentially, if not an ally, at least neutralized a very strong threat in having uh, Russia not on the side of China and isolating China. But instead, what we've done through the whole course of basically in many ways i would argue inciting this war and definitely f feeling the flames of it is now long term we have a very powerful axis that we constructed ourselves and now are going to have to fight at once and maybe they want it yeah 